It's Wayne with you here this morning, joined by Ricky Lambert uh, as we talk uh, international politics. Hi, Ricky. How are you? Good, thank you. Now, let's have a look at this situation with China that's emerging. We've got uh, Mike Bazzullo, who uh, was talking about the drums of war we're beating and that Australia must prepare for conflict in the region. The Chinese ministry, um, the foreign ministry, uh, their spokesperson, a uh, Zhao Lijian, has responded to those comments. Yeah, he certainly has, and the the rhetoric is getting amped up more and more, and it's coming from both sides. And this is what he has said: uh, he that statements that incite confrontation and hype up the threat of war, which is extremely irresponsible, is what he's saying, are coming from Australian politicians. He claims that these people are the real troublemakers. He's also said Australia is being untruthful and immoral with its false allegation of a China threat theory. And just to add to the spin, he says at the end, China is a promoter of peace and global development. It's an interesting one because President Rodrigo Duterte, who is the president of the Philippines, which um, has had significant issues with China over islands, um, the Spratly Islands and others nearby the Philippines, their southern part of their country. And he's had this to say. He says, China, let it be known, it is a good friend and we don't want trouble with them, especially of war. But he then says um, the the things that they are doing well are giving us the vaccines um, for the coronavirus. Uh, So he's happy with China while he takes the vaccines. For free. Yeah, but don't start taking our sovereignty away. Well, good on him that he has said that we're not going to compromise here when it comes to our country's national interest and our borders. We're going to protect those. And it just goes to show all of this uh, gift giving from China and even cheap debt to help them build projects or even building ports infrastructure some countries are going to hopefully going to follow um, Duterte's lead and say, well, that's all very nice. Thanks for that. But when you start threatening our national security, we're not going to stand up for that. For Australia, is it more about the iron instead of the wine? Yes, well, we keep covering this too, for two reasons on Flow News 24, partly because our farmers are suffering because of the tariffs that have been slapped on barley and wine in retaliation by China to how we've approached them on the foreign stage, but also because China keeps showing up in all the news bulletins. They keep going on about a range of things. And one thing I noticed in our iron ore export data is that we've sent $10 billion of iron ore to China in the last month alone, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics. We only sent $14 billion across the world, so $10 billion of that $14 billion went to China. It's a lot, and it says that China still wants our raw materials to make steel out of, which uh, presumably they build into infrastructure and uh, they use as part of uh, their supply for its Belt and Road projects and uh, so forth, bridge building, and which could have in fact been in Victoria if uh, that had been cancelled. But at the same time, uh, it's saying uh, that we don't want your agriculture cultural products where uh, they feel they can hurt Australia. So is there more of a propaganda war going on here from China, playing the game uh, in a sense, and Australia maybe now with Peter Dutton uh, involving himself in it, are we buying into it, the propaganda? I mean, should we just uh, let things go unsaid? Or the Matt Canavan statement, uh, you know, my kids have got uh, a lot more fear for the circumstance of a war with China than what they should have over climate change. Well, yeah, as Matt Canavan was pointing out, we need to put our national security first with things like energy and our ability to support our manufacturing should it come to a war. And I think that's why China slapped tariffs on barley and wine. They don't need that for their national security, but they need the iron ore. Mm. Uh, You mentioned bridges and other things, the scaffolding they might be building. They can build warships uh, and guns and other missiles with um, Australian iron ore. And I think that's the real reason that China has been willing to slap us around on um, other tariffs, but they definitely want to keep receiving our iron ore because it's also high grade. It's good quality iron ore, and uh, it's going to be a bit hard to take if that starts being used against our own soldiers. Yes, it will be, and uh, it's an important thing to recognise that our coal also uh, the biggest export market for China, or at least imports from us, is on coal for energy, cheap energy, that we ourselves uh, simply are not producing anymore, which makes our manufacturing cost more when we have to go up against China when it comes to, say, a car or a piece of steel. So a very interesting time for Australian politics and also the region's politics. Thanks, Ricky, for bringing us up to date on that important story.